So, trebuchets. Other than hurling projectiles hundreds of metres into the distance, they're pretty cool demonstrations of physics. Now if you've been following my YouTube channel for a little while, you'll probably notice that I like making lots of mechanical things, and it probably won't surprise you if I said I built a trebuchet in the past. Now I'm going to show you the only image that I have of this trebuchet. I'll post it right here. And this trebuchet was about three and a half metres tall, and it had about uh, 24 kilogram counterweight, if I remember correctly. The reason why I say that is that I was 12 years old when I built it. So, um, yeah, I was a bit of a crazy kid. Anyway, back then I was limited by quite a few things, including the tools I had available to me, uh, my budget, and also my engineering knowledge, or lack of. Uh, so this time around, I'm revisiting it about 12 years later, and um, hopefully I can make it a bit better, because that old one didn't throw very far. I wish I kept videos of it, but um, you're just going to have to take my word. It was quite terrible. So let's get on with it. I had some wood left over from building the bench in my workshop, which I used to dimension the parts in this design. The basic gist of the frame is two equilateral triangles made from wooden beams to make a pivot point about one metre from the ground. The wooden beams will be held together using parts cut from 9mm sheet plywood, which once I was happy with the design, I arranged them to be CNC cut. Because some of the parts slot together, I chose to start by cutting out only two pieces to see how well they fit. I then ran a quick simulation and exported the G-code. Fortunately, my new CNC router is large enough to accommodate a 2x4 foot sheet of plywood, although it does hang out the side a bit. Once the board was fixed down, I ran the G-code to drill the holes in the parts. I then stopped the machine and put screws into the holes to make sure that the parts wouldn't move around whilst they're being cut. Oh, and uh, I forgot to check the screw placement properly. So that router bit was ruined, but luckily I had a spare, so I carried on cutting. I'm still learning about CNC feeds and speeds, so the edges are a bit rough, but nothing a file can't fix. I then added some glue and forced the parts together. And they fit pretty well, so it's time to cut the rest of the parts. For the main beams of the trebuchet, I'm using pine, which measures at 45 by 74 millimeters cross-sectional dimensions, and I'm cutting them to the same length as the CAD model. I then drilled the holes for the M8 bolts, and it's time to see if it all fits together. Now, you might be thinking that the thick wood beams are a bit overkill for this size of trebuchet, which you're probably right, but I chose to initially over-engineer the frame of the trebuchet, just in case I wanted to try some really high counterweights. A few bolts later, with the axle plates in position, one half is complete. Now it's time to build the other half, and I could simply do a transition like this, but I want to take a few seconds to talk about quality of CNC router bits. These parts are being cut with a bit which I purchased from China for about £3, which I mainly ordered for testing purposes. Whereas these parts are being cut with a bit that I bought from the UK for £24 and could probably qualify for sale in a Swedish furniture store. So remember kids, don't buy cheap router bits. Or a router for that matter. The two halves were then joined using some more M8 bolts and some wing nuts so it can be disassembled easily. The short beams which join the two halves together are 350mm in length, making the total width just under 500mm, which is perfect for the 500mm steel shaft I've ordered. So unfortunately that's it for this week's video. Uh, I've managed to build the main structure of the trebuchet. Um, I'm actually waiting on a main axle, which is a 25mm thick steel, stainless steel rod. Um, but unfortunately the company that I ordered it from like to ship their parts cheap and it arrived four days too late and there was nothing in the packaging. So I've uh, had to order another stainless steel rod from another company uh, whilst I wait for them to sort out my refund. Um, so that's delayed me, well hopefully not too long because I don't know how long this nice weather is going to last. But other than that, I'm really pleased with the way that this frame has turned out. It's super sturdy, um, it's quite heavy, but it's pretty tough and it folds up really nicely uh, with the butterfly nut, uh, sorry the wing nut. Um, bolts just to hold the two sides together 
and uh, yeah, the only thing I need to check is whether it fits underneath my bench. But hopefully if my measurements are right, then that shouldn't be an issue. So next week, I'm going to be going through some calculations of how I can optimize this trebuchet. Uh, there's quite a lot of physics involved uh, behind making a trebuchet work well. It's quite easy to make a trebuchet work, but to make it work well is actually surprisingly difficult. Uh, so if you're new to my channel and you want to see how I'm going to optimize it, then click the subscribe button down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and a huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these weekly videos possible and yeah, I don't think I could do it without you, especially as I've had to order so many stainless steel rods and bearings for this project. Um, and also wood isn't cheap, surprisingly enough. I, uh, this is probably my most expensive project in quite a while, actually. But I think it's going to be a good project. And even uh, though it's just a relatively simple project, uh, I think it could bring some quite cool opportunities. Maybe we can design something uh, to be launched from it. So yeah, thanks once again for watching and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.